The movie Dark Phoenix, X-Men Dark Phoenix, has now hit theaters. And, you know, we've been talking about X-Men Dark Phoenix for a couple of days now for all the worst reasons. You know, I had heard a number of months ago that the film turned out to be a bit of a disaster. I hadn't seen it yet myself at the time. So we talked about that. Then, you know, the the uh, the movie came out, the initial reviews dropped, not good. Then it became official that it's uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix is the worst rated, critically rated X-Men film of all time, having the absolute lowest Rotten Tomatoes score out of any of the X-Men related films, uh, which is unfortunate. So last night, I took myself over. I'm, a, I'm about a 12-minute walk from the AMC Burbank 16 up the street. So I took a walk over the AMC Burbank last night, sat down to watch X-Men Dark Phoenix, not knowing what to expect. Because, you know, guys, listen, I love the X-Men films. I, I was really disappointed with X-Men Apocalypse. Obviously, X-Men Origins Wolverine isn't so hot, and X-Men Last Stand isn't so hot. But for the most part, I really do quite enjoy most of the X-Men films. And quite frankly, I said this in a, in a social media post last night, quite frankly, I think there are a number of X-Men films that are better than most Marvel MCU films. I think Logan, X-Men Days of Future Past, I, I think those two movies are better than most Marvel MCU films. Not all of them, but most of them. So I went in with hoping it would be great, but fully prepared that this movie could be a complete disaster because of all the things we've been saying. So I sat down and watched it. And honestly, it's not terrible. It's, it's not terrible. It is not the terrible train wreck, in my opinion, that a number of people have made it out to be. Here's how I, I would sort of break it down. The first act is pretty okay I, honestly the, the way they set up the world in which this x-men movie takes place and again there are a number of major continuity issues with this movie compared to the other x-men movies but again that's fox continuity schmontinuity they don't really care so i don't care either but the first act is actually not bad it's it doesn't jump off the screen and grab you by the throat like some other films do it doesn't you know warrant your attention right away it's not a great first act but it sets up the film pretty well it sets it up pretty well. The second act of the film is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> the second act, the, the middle body of the movie is absolutely atrocious. And you could just tell, oh my God, this is being made by a first time director because he's having things happen and he's having lines being said certain ways that are just, oh my God, you can tell this is a first time director. And this was the first time Simon Kimberg had ever directed anything. And you guys know how I feel about somebody making their first directorial effort on a big major blockbuster film with a huge budget, stuff like that. It's not a good idea. And the second act of this film is really rather terrible. And, and I, I'm getting the feeling, understandably so, that a lot of the people who did not like or who hated this film probably established that feeling somewhere in the second act because the second act really is quite bad. It drags. Most of the cringy scenes are in the second act of the film. A lot of questionable decisions made in the second act of the film. Some character choices they make are done during that second act of the film, and it, and it is really quite bad. But, but I got to say, as we got into the third act of the film, and the third act is where you guys know in the trailers, you see that big train scene with the train coming off the tracks and all that kind of stuff. That happens in the third act of the film. The third act of the film was quite frankly, much better than I was thinking because I'm sitting in the movie theater, right? And I'm like, okay, first act was all right. It's, it's all right. First act's okay. Second act is like, oh my God. And I just feel the whole trajectory of the movie, like just the quality of the movie just sinking fast, right? And I'm sitting in my seat going, oh God, this movie's going to end up being terrible because we get to the end of the second act. And then the third act comes. And I'll tell you what, a lot of the action was quite good. Um, that train scene, which looks kind of laughable in the trailers, was actually pretty good in the movie. I like what they did with Magneto in general and how they treated Magneto and all that kind of stuff. I thought the, the conclusion or the resolution of the film made some sense. There is a big continuity, not a continuity error, but there's a big logic problem near the end of the film, but I won't go into what that is right now. But overall, I actually thought the third act was pretty solid. If the third act was reflective of the entire movie, I would have come out going, 
that's a pretty solid movie. X-Men Dark Phoenix is a pretty solid movie. I wouldn't say it was great, but I'd say, yeah, that's a pretty damn solid movie. Unfortunately, the third act is not reflective of the entire movie. The first act is, yeah, all right. Second act, totally abysmal. Third act, pretty strong. The action was good. I, I thought, the, look, honestly, I'm still not quite sure what I think of Sophie Turner as an actress. Uh, I, I, I love her in Game of Thrones. I did not like her so much in X-Men Apocalypse. Not that there's anything to like much about X-Men Apocalypse. Um, and so I, I was a little bit nervous about her. Honestly, I thought she was pretty solid. I, I thought she, I didn't like all the words she was saying, but that's the script. That's not her. I thought the performance she brought was actually pretty good. At least not bad at all. It was much better than I thought it would be. Now, to me, the weakest link in this chain is Jessica Chastain. Jessica Chastain is the best actor in the entire movie, but it's really more the character. The character was terrible, and the story of that character is terrible, and the background of that story is terrible, and what she represents in the movie is terrible, and it was to me, it was easily the wor worst and weakest part of the film was not Jessica Chastain's performance, but rather that character at all and what that character represented. Seemed pretty, oh wait, I forgot, we, we need some kind of villain, quick, throw in something quick. That, that's kind of how it came across to me, uh, was it kind of came across to me on that level. How much of this is Simon Kimberg? Look, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a big Simon Kimberg fan. I have been for a long time. And I, I've had the pleasure of meeting him on a couple of occasions. He's a super nice guy too. But I have always said, a director should not be cutting their teeth with their very first movie on a big blockbuster, big budget film. Now, Simon Kimberg has produced and written some of the best comic book movies out there. He's, he's written and produced some fabulous films. He's also written and produced some bad ones too, but he's written and produced some great ones. But directing is completely different than writing. Directing is completely different than producing. And he should have done something else before trying to do an X-Men movie. Because while I've seen first-time directors do much worse jobs than Simon Kimberg did, you could also tell in many parts, and I don't want to go into specifics or details because I don't want to give a lot of stuff away, you could tell this was a movie that was in the hand of a first-time director who was missing a lot of the nuance, who was missing a lot of the, uh, let's just say, a lot of the atmosphere setting that he did. He had some cool ideas because he's Simon Kimberg. But I think this is a movie that would have been better served in the hands of a more experienced director, or it could have done better if they put the movie off a little bit, let Simon Kimberg go on to direct a smaller indie project kind of film first, then maybe this could have worked out a little bit better. But listen, overall, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, Dark Phoenix is the next Days of Future Past. It's not. It's not. It's not a great movie. I, I even hesitate to say it's a good movie. It's probably not. But... It's not a train wreck. It's not this awful pile of garbage that a lot of us have been fearing that it would be. Um, there are multiple terrible things, but there are also multiple redeeming qualities about the film to the point where as somebody who is an X-Man fan and a fan of these movies, I walked out of the movie going, well, I'm glad I saw it. And I think if you're somebody who really likes the X-Men universe and you like these X-Men films, I think a lot of you will also walk out of the theater, not jumping for joy, but at least walking out of the theater going, well, I'm glad I saw it. Um, again, lots of terrible stuff. I can't blame anybody who doesn't like this film. I can't blame anybody who doesn't like it. But again, to me, there was enough redeeming qualities in the film. I thought the acting was quite good. The action scenes were actually really quite well done. The effects were actually way better than I thought they would be. And the establishment of the world that this particular movie takes in was quite creative. So, great? No. Good? Maybe not. But a dumpster fire? Completely devoid of any value? No, I wouldn't say that either. This is a middle-of-the-road kind of X-Men film, which is still unfortunate for them to end this iconic series with but still not the car crash I was sort of expecting. But listen, guys, I, I do want to go into more details on this. So what I'm going to do is Sunday afternoon, we are going to do a, I wasn't planning on doing this, but after I saw this movie, I thought there's a lot of points of this film I want to discuss openly. So Sunday afternoon, we are going to do 
a X-Men Dark Phoenix open spoiler discussion. So if, if you've seen the movie and you're just wanted, you're dying to talk about it, let's do a spoiler discussion on Sunday afternoon. So keep your guys, uh, your eyes open for that. So what did you guys think of X-Men Dark Phoenix? Did some of you guys have a chance to see it? If so, jump down to the comments section below and let me know your thoughts.